All right, you're back with the most shadow band man in the land. Let's take a stand and speak some truth here. Um, this video, uh, once again, I got to thank the uh, people who view my videos and, and leave comments. Uh, thank you. I will be getting to them as soon as they arrive because uh, I just, I just, I get comments sporadically and, and at times I don't know whether they're old, but um, I had one viewer, a long time viewer who said that my latest videos, uh, he, he subscribed, he hit the bell and everything and, and none of it showed up in the feed and or just, he, he actually, he said, you're right about being the most shadow banned man in the land because um, I guess apparently he might have checked my channel too and they were, he didn't, I guess he didn't see him as soon as I uploaded him. So I don't know what's going on with that. I can, I'm not really uh, too tech savvy when it comes to these, um, you know, YouTube and Google matters. But from what I've been reading, they are, you know, that's what they're doing. They're shadow banning people who actually do make truth content. Uh, left or right, and I don't see that changing ever because as long as we uh, operate under the system that we're operating under, uh, it won't change. But uh, that that shouldn't stop me, uh, along with anybody else who wants to uh, make a, original content that deals with these political, uh, economic, and geopolitical matters uh, in, in, from their perspective. Because as I've said, um, it's, it's why I encourage people to watch all the alternative media. And I don't, uh, even if I label someone a shill, like I had a video of Bill Still, Super Shill. Even if I were to label uh, you or anybody you like as a shill, I wouldn't, I wouldn't discourage people from watching you. Because um, as the saying goes, even a broken clock is right twice a day. And... My perspective, and I've also said this in the past, I have a quote from my, my mother's uh, eldest brother now, eldest living brother. You know, if you were to believe everything that I say and uh, look at everything from my perspective, you would be out of your mind because you would be in my mind. You would actually be dropping your own uh, reasoning abilities and in investigative powers to just exclusively take my word for it. That would be a bad idea. So I encourage everyone to uh, even check out the shills and and, the, and also the mainstream media for that matter. Uh, it's, it's the only way to know anything about anything um, that happens in the world that you can't see with your own two eyes. You know, you have to um, accept other people's uh, confirmation and perspective on certain issues uh, and, unless you're a total uh, uh, skeptic. It's, you know, unlike the skeptic community on YouTube, skepticism is actually a philosophical school of thought that encourages um, the questioning of reality. And some skeptics are so extreme that they don't uh, believe that anything is real outside of themselves. So you figure that out. I, I can't. But, um, you know, it, it just goes to show you uh, that skepticism is good. So, But uh, after saying all that, if you were to... You know, not to listen to um, any third party sources or the media or, or history for that matter, history, uh, geographers, you wouldn't be able to confirm whether or not the nation of Japan exists. Uh, so just, just keep that in mind too. So a healthy dose of skepticism is good. Ex extreme skepticism is bad, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, we have this... Um, situation here on YouTube with the uh, truth or industrial complex and uh, this individual Johnny got a vigilante intelligence check out his channel by the way most of what he does is good but lately and and I think um Adam Green has, has stepped back from it but but for a minute it looked like both of them were going to get on this whole let's bash Alexander Dugan bandwagon when just like jo George Soros that's just the tip of the iceberg and in the case of Alexander Dugan He's a, a philosopher and a political strategist and a Russian nationalist. Uh, so if he were to come up with strategies and um, methods and uh, means to disrupt the United States, to undermine the United States 
in favor of Russia, he'd be doing his job appropriately. Unlike the people, un unlike um, you know, the people who are supposedly like uh, Karl Rove was known as Bush's brain because one of the digs against uh, Putin is that um, Dugan. He did, people call him uh, Alexander Dugan's Putin, Putin's brain, but. Um, or I should say Putin, I think, is the, the more appropriate uh, pronunciation. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how people in the alternative media still try to, um, they try to, it seems like they try to denigrate Russia and demean Russia in favor of the United States, as if the, again, as, as if the United States is some sort of savior. This country is the linchpin of the New World Order. This is Rothschild's hammer we're living in. This is Airstrip 2. I don't know if um, you're familiar with the book 1984 by George or Orwell, but um, you know, Britain was Airstrip 1, uh, which was a part of a global empire known as Oceania. And if you look at the contemporary politics and geopolitics, where it's going, 1984 is prophetic. But unlike Alex Jones, the answer to 1984 isn't 1776. It's actually 1848 in the philosophies of Mikhail Bakunin. But again, that's my personal taste and opinion. But um, yeah, the United States is doing serious damage once again to the world, especially uh, the Southern Hemisphere and, and in particular um, Latin America. Um, you know, they're... they're you know, you had Putin, I mean, not Putin, Pompeo calling, uh, or was it, um, it might have been John, the uh, insane, butt-licking Zionist uh, Bolton's uh, speech where he said the troika of tyranny, Cuba. Notice it's Cuba, Nicaragua, Venezuela. Has any of those countries attacked the United States? Well, Cuba did in a sense. The United States had mafias and monopolies controlling Cuba. The, the Cubans did not own Cuba. And the Cuban exile community, especially the earlier um, uh, you know, members of the Cuban exile community, especially in Miami, they were the people who benefited from the monopolies and the uh, harsh treatment of Afro-Cubans Actually, the uh, third-class citizenship, they liked that because they benefited from it. The dictator Batista was backed by mafias. And as we all know, it could be a Hispanic mafia, an Italian mafia, but they all answered to the original mafia, the Hebrew mafia. And the United States had corporations, monopolies, and mafia ties controlling Cuba. Fidel Castro put a stop to that. He also put a stop to overt racism and excluding black people from being able to learn and be able to become doctors or whatever they wanted to be. So he was really hated for that. But I like Castro because he didn't have a Rothschild bank. And Cuba, to my knowledge, Cuba still doesn't have a Rothschild bank. And um, in addition to that, I love how he would always challenge the United States to actually do some good in the world. He was like, you know, they can make bombs to kill hungry, illiterate, and poor people throughout the world. He's like, they can never make bombs to make peace and prosperity, prosperity, liber, uh, uh, literacy, literacy, oh my God, I'm getting tongue tied, uh, uh, literacy. Uh, they can't, they can't bomb their way into actually helping the world and improving things, but they can't make bombs to maim, murder, destroy, and oppress people. That's the specialty here in the United States. That's, that's the only thing we really, our manufacturing that, that we really lead on, and, get, and by the way, the stocks that you people can't invest in are tied to the military-industrial complex. But um, in addition to that, the United States also bullied uh, a Maurice Bishop um, in uh, Grenada, I believe is the Car Car Caribbean island, that wanted to become socialist, that the United States said, hey, hold on, you can't choose your own government. So the United States is at it again. They put Juan Guido in the gallery during uh, uh, Donald Trump or, or DJ Chump. I, I, I promise I wouldn't insult him anymore, but I just, I just have to. He's such a pig. Uh, DJ uh, Trump uh, actually hacked this Guido bum in the gallery and calling him legitimate president of Venezuela. By the way, upon his return, he was pelted with eggs and other things, which was good. I wish, 
I wish that the uh, Venezuelan people could get their hands on him and, and just tear him limb from limb because, and, and, and to me, he actually looks like a crypto uh, tribe member. He looks like he's a Hebrew, but um, I couldn't make, gather any information on that. But one thing's for sure, he's a total boot and butt licker to the United States, which makes him an even more of a, of a slime ball and even lower because the United States licks the boots and butt of uh, Netanyahu and his tribe and his uh, Shabbat Lubavitch maniac crew. But, um, yeah, so the United States, and, 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 and this is what I don't like about uh, Johnny Gott and why I unsubscribe from his channel. I still watch his content, but I won't be numbered among his subscribers because this guy actually has the nerve to um, imp imply that the United States and the people of this country well, I'm going to start referring to most people here in this country as meat and strodel sacks because that's pretty much, I mean, the people at my job, uh, you know, God bless them. I, I like them uh, on a personal level. I think I like mostly everybody at my job. Um, I don't have any problems and I work with hundreds of people uh, or at least there's hundreds of people on the roster. So, but I mean, people, it, it's sad, but they're, they're, most of the people from my observation, they're just meat machines. The, the mainstream media programs them and, and the uh, indoctrination education system, and they can never break out of it, seemingly. And again, you could show people all the evidence in the world. Because what, what Johnny God is doing now is he's uh, demonizing socialism using the Bolsheviks, using Marxism, which we are. If you pay attention to my channel, I always tell everyone that there were other socialists, socialist philosophers, thinkers, communities throughout the, I'm going to say four continents on the world, because as you all know, I don't think, um, I don't count Australia as a continent. And for me, the uh, what we call the Americas used to be totally connected via a land bridge that led from you know present day Mexico all the way down to Colombia. And remember, Panama was not considered a part of North America until they built the Panama Canal because Panama was actually a part of Colombia. So, you know, go figure. But across the world, most, especially when you get outside of systems, let's, let's, let's go back briefly to um, even Europe before the advent of the Roman uh, Empire. There was a quote-unquote Celtic Empire, but it really wasn't an empire. It was an ethnic group that dominated the European continent because they had certain advantages that the people that inhabited the continent before them didn't have. They were part of the original Aryan uh, migration. That um, These Aryan people, these ancient Aryans, were the first to domesticate horses, which gave them a big combat advantage over most of the people uh, around the world. They, they started out in Central Asia, too, by the way. So once you get the, to the Romans and prior... Most people around the world lived in semi, if not outright communism, but communalism. The people benefited from associating with each other and they shared the resources. Uh, and again, until you get to more advanced city states like um, that existed in Mesopotamia. But uh, this was just a quick rant because I'm sick of people ignoring the other socialist movements and ideas and sticking to the Jewish-led Bolshevik, um, you, know, demon, you know, demonizing socialism, socialism through that. And, and also making excuses for atrocities that the um, people who founded this country committed. See you later.